In this video, we will learn how to use C-Sharp script and the user interface to select and move game object at runtime in Unity. So I'm at runtime now. I could hover over with mouse and select a game object. Once I select it, its coordinates will show in our uh, user interface and I could change these uh, coordinates and the uh, game object would move accordingly. Like, so if I select something else, I could also move it in different direction using the x y and z coordinates to start i've created a number of game objects over here and i created a folder named materials and assigned different materials to these uh, game objects and then i just selected the main camera and uh, positioned it and rotated it in a way so we could have this view we need to decide which game objects that we would like them to be selectable and add a selectable tag name to them. And we could do that by going to the tag, add tag, and hit the plus button. And I'll just write selectable. And then we, uh, I don't want the plane to be selectable, but all other 3D objects, I want them to be, be selectable. So I just select them all and go to the tag and select the selectable. They all have the selectable tag to them now. Next, we can start by creating the user interface. So right click UI and I'll start with panel. And I'll just call it panel underscore uh, position. And uh, while selecting the panel, I'll change the pivot to be zero on the X and one on the Y and the uh, uh, anchor to be top left. And then I'll just uh, press F on the keyboard so we could zoom into it. And I'll change the uh, width to be something around 650 and the height something around 55. So now we could have a look at it here. Then I'll change the uh, panel color to something of a dark gray. So I'll just select here and go down and make sure the transparency is none. So this A value is 255 and that should be fine. Next, I'll create a text. So right click UI. Text Mesh Pro and import Text Mesh, Mesh Pro Essentials. And we'll rename the game object, text, text game object to text underscore position. And um, similarly, I'll change its uh, pivot to be uh, zero on the X, one on the Y, and the uh, anchor to be top left and we'll give it five offset on the X and on the Y would be zero. The width will be something around 150 and the height would be stay 250. And then for the text, I'll keep it to 36 and the color to white and we'll just write position and I'll just uh, align it vertically to the center. Like so, now we could have a look at it. Now I'll create three more duplicates of that text. So I'll select it and hold uh, Control and D press and again and again. So we'll have three. Uh, we'll change the first one to be named text underscore X and the second one will be text underscore Y and the third will be text underscore Z. And I'll select the uh, first one and we'll change its width to 30. And uh, the position on the X would be 155. And uh, the text would be X only. And I'll select the next one, which is the Y. And uh, I'll change its width to uh, 30 as well. And the position on the X will be around 320. And the text would be Y. And the last one, the Z, will change its width similarly to be uh, 30. 
and the x position would be 485 and we'll change it to z like so next we could create the input field so uh, we'll do right click and ui and we'll select input field text mesh pro and i'll just rename that to input field underscore x and similarly uh, so i'll change the pivot to zero and the x and one on the y and the anchor to top left and uh, we'll move to its x position to 182.5 and the y position to minus 10 somewhere around here and the width would be 1 to 5 and the height would stay 30 and uh, i'll just go to the uh, text so i'll expand it and expand the text area and select the text and just make sure its size to be somewhere around 25 and i'll just align it vertically by selecting this and if i go back to the um, input field i'll just want it to accept decimals so i'll change those settings so here uh, the content content type instead of standard i will select decimal and i think it's ready so if i click play I'll change the uh, settings to full HD and if I type something here like four or five yeah it seems all right now I could make two more copies for the text field for the uh, X and Y so I'll select this input field for the X and press ctrl D to make one duplicate and another one for the other and I'll select the this one and we'll change it to Y instead and then I'll just uh, change its position to on the X to be uh, three four five point five that's it and uh, the other one I'll select it and change its name to uh, z and select it again and its position on the x would be 510.5 so these are ready now now we can create the script so under the assets i'll right click create a new folder we'll name it scripts and open it and under there right click create c sharp and we'll name it select move and once it's created uh, i could also create an empty game object create empty in the hierarchy and i will uh, it's just empty game object so i can attach the script to it so i'll uh, name it the same thing select move and now I could attach the script into it and select it to make sure the script is there and then double click on the script to open it in Visual Studio. So inside the script I added uh, the, this code and I will put there will be a link in the description to the GitHub link that has all this code where you could copy it from there so i have new namespaces over here and then number of uh, public and private variables and then under the start method we'll uh, we'll, we'll have three uh, lines where we get the input field components uh, we take them uh, from the game objects uh, so as a component and then under the update uh, we have number of blocks this block what it does is the hi to highlight the um, an object uh, using the when the mouse is hovering over it uh, so if it has a selectable tag using graycast it will be uh, highlighted and then the other uh, block what it does is uh, um, uh, select a, a game object on the mouse click if it has a selectable tag using the rate casting methodology 
and then uh, we have an uh, another uh, uh, method here it's called get selected position and what it does it's assign the x y and z positions uh, of the selected game object to the input field we created and hide the input fields if no objects is selected so to avoid confusion and the next block or what it does is uh, it's, a, it's a number of methods uh, to set the X, Y, and Z positions. And they uh, attach uh, um, to the on value change event of the corresponding input fields that we created in the editor. And they get the value from those fields and call the uh, set selected position method, which is over here. And what does that method do? It's to the set the position for the selected game object to match the user input. So that's all the code and it will be available in a GitHub link in the description below. So now if I save and go back to the editor. So if I select the game object that the script is attached to, you will notice it will need a highlight material and selection materials. And inside the material folder, I'll have a number of, I have a number of materials. One of them is highlight. You could assign any material of which you want the object to look like when it's highlighted and selected. So I'll have this, uh, for me, I have this magenta slightly different for the highlight and, and selection. So I'll just drag them into the highlight slot and the selection slot. And then uh, for the uh, what we need next, uh, three public variables, which is the input for the position and X, for the x position which we uh, created over here so this is the input x i'll just drag it here and this is the input y and the input z the last thing we need to do is to assign scripts to the input field so i'll select the first input field and scroll down till i reach the on value change event so i'll just click plus and then I could drag the game objects to uh, which the script our script over here is attached and I'll just drag it into here so now I could access the script uh, methods and public variables and so uh, I'll just select move and then go all the way to set position X select that one and we'll do the same for the other input uh, fields so here plus and we'll drag the game object access the method and here I'll just select set position Y because it's for the Y field and then for the Z field we'll do the same drag the select move and access the uh, script and select set pos Z so now uh, I can save and hit the play button and now if I move the mouse, it's highlight. I could select the game object. You'll see its coordinates here. If I enter values, the coordinates will change whether it's plus or minus and on the Y and the Z as well and so on, so forth for, so forth for uh, everything uh, else. That's it, thank you. Please like, subscribe and click the notifications button to help me make more videos like this.